morning everyone hope you're doing fine and well and it's friday hooray right today we're going to have a little look at some war poetry so a wee introduction to war poetry which will prepare you if you're not already at high school for what you're likely to study at some point because war poetry is done a lot at school You've obviously maybe done some already at primary. Right, as always, today's word of the day is barrage. Barrage, which means a concentrated artillery bombardment over a wide area. For example, his forces launched an artillery barrage on the city. And today's spelling word, we're going to have a sort of war theme running on next week so all the words of the day and the spelling words will be based on combat of some sort so today's spelling word is assassin which is one of those double s double s remember like assessment yesterday and the spelling b and a big thumbs up to dylan who got 22 out of 25 well done young man very proud pun of the day as usual just waiting for the bus because my car got towed. <laughs> Love it. Right. So as I've said, war poetry is studied a lot at both primary and secondary levels. And although the war poems are naturally going to be sad, some of them are quite uplifting and inspiring and make us think of how fortunate we are to be here today. Uh, it's also ve very relevant this year because I'm sure a lot of you know this was the 75th anniversary of the VE celebration. So VE stands for Victory in Europe and that's basically our Victory in Europe day. It's basically the day that we celebrate when Winston Churchill officially announced the end of the combat with Nazi Germany. So that's why we celebrate it. And I know this year we couldn't do it in style like we would normally but... I'm sure we all had our own little celebrations at home and remembered those who made all those sacrifices. All right, so your first task is you've got a picture of a war scene there and thinking back to when we talked about the senses. So what are the senses again? Well done. So the senses are sight, sound, smell, taste, touch. So, looking at that picture, I'd like you to imagine that you're in there, that scene, that you're actually in combat. And I just want you to jot down, just going to give you one minute, jot down some of the senses that you might think about. So, think about what sound you might hear, smell, taste, what would it feel like, that sort of thing. You're going to develop them uh, later on in the lesson but just jot down some ideas on what you think it would be like to be involved here Alexa play some lovely ideas just to get your thoughts are flowing this morning all right so the first poem that we're going to look at is by the, probably the, the most famous uh, war poets of, uh, of all time 
whose name is Wilfred Owen. If you'd like to find out a little bit more about him, that's what this afternoon's lesson is all about at two o'clock. So you can tune in where we're going to focus on some more of his poetry and find out more about the man himself. So the last laugh. So I'm just going to read it. Now, some of you might actually like to just close your eyes because it just makes you try and visualise the scene a little bit more. So feel free to sit back, relax, close your eyes and just get lost in this moment. The last laugh. Oh, Jesus Christ, I'm hit, he said and died. Whether he vainly cursed or prayed indeed, the bullets chirped in vain, vain, vain. Machine guns chuckled, tup, 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 and the big gun guffawed. Another sighed, oh, mother, mother, dad, then smiled at nothing, childlike, being dead. And the lofty shrapnel cloud leisurely gestured, fool, and the splinters spat and tittered. My love! one moaned love languid seemed his mood till slowly lord his whole face kissed the mud and the bayonet's long teeth grinned rabbles of shells hooted and groaned and the gas hissed right so obviously that's quite uh, an emotionally charged poem so what makes that poem particularly effective? So I've just jotted down some notes. So when you're doing war poetry at school, you just have to maybe try and obviously think about all the techniques that, that the poet has been using and why they're effective. And that's why we've been focusing on those particular techniques over the last few weeks. We're going to do another one on Monday, which is a good introduction to the poem that you're going to start studying next week. I have put the poem on the aim higher resources page a blank copy i will be putting some work on today or over the weekend to get you to start looking at that poem and study it at home so if you'd like to take part then you just have to do a little bit of work before the lesson so that you can understand what's happening all right so the last laugh so the last laugh basically comes from there's an expression that says he who laughs last laughs best so what that's saying is obviously during a war, because there's laughter going on all the way through the poem, it's obviously death who has the last laugh and you can't escape that. So the poem is really sad because it talks about three young soldiers who, who die uh, and it's just their final moments in the battlefield. And obviously Owen, Wilfred Owen has written this to show just how horrific it was and obviously to highlight the youth of the men as well. So laughter is certainly not something we would expect in any sort of war poem or, or any war film or anything like that. Obviously the soldiers did laugh, you know there's only one way to try and get through tragedy sometimes but certainly not in a, maybe a war poem. However obviously what Owen has done here is he has made the, the guns and the machinery seem really horrible and evil because you know as the soldiers are dying they're laughing in different forms all the way through. So it highlights just, you know, that, that it's effective because usually laughter is a cheery, happy thing that we do. Uh, I'm sure you do a lot when you watch me, uh, whether it be <laughs> uh, or uh, laughing. But um, the laughter just basically highlights that they're going to get the last laugh. They're going to win. So it's futile, which means it's useless, pointless. It's useless you know, for the soldiers to even try and live because that's just not going to happen. So that's what the laughter represents. Um, so basically the guns are alive. So we're going to look at that technique on Monday. So you might already know what that is, but they're made to seem alive. They're not normally alive. And that's what Owen has done that for because all the way through the poem, they're laughing at the soldiers' pain and suffering. So obviously that's just not a nice thing at all. And throughout the poem, um, he, he describes them as he said or another sighed and then lastly one moaned so they don't have an identity you don't know who they are or their names or anything about them but that's clever because by not giving them identity he makes a couple of points 
One is that there were so many soldiers who perished that, you know, it was like it was all blended into one. And secondly, by not having an identity, we can obviously imagine what they would maybe look like. And it also suggests that in a war, there were just numbers. You know, there were just men on the ground trying to fight the enemy. So, there, you know, there's a few reasons why that's clever as well. All right. We did on a the other day, so remember that's all the words that make the sound of the, the noise they're trying to represent. I've given you one there, boom. So I'm just going to give you one minute to try and come up with, just focus on sounds now, and just try and come up with as many onomatopoeic words as you can think of for what noises you would expect in a battlefield. Alexa, play. <laughs> Alexa, stop. All right, I hope you come up with some amazing ideas. You did do a wee lesson on it and I've uploaded some sheets at home for you to use as well if you like. They're on the resources page too. I did that last night. All right, we're going to look at another poem just now. Now, unusually, there is a quite famous war poet who is a woman. And that's quite unusual because I'm sure you know that soldiers were men. However, women had a vital, very, uh, lots of vital roles to play in the war. Vera Britain, you can obviously Google a lot more about her, but she was a nurse and she was a field nurse and she lost her brother and her fiance. So she was engaged to somebody and they both died in the war. So she's written quite a lot of poems in ode to them as, as memory to them. So we're just going to read it and again feel free to close your eyes and imagine. So this is called Perhaps. Perhaps someday the sun will shine again and I shall see that still the skies are blue and feel once more I do not live in vain although I feel bereft of you. Perhaps the golden meadows at my feet will make the sunny hours of spring seem gay and I shall find the white may blossom sweet, though you have passed away. Perhaps the summer woods will shimmer bright, and crimson roses once again be fair, and autumn harvest fields a rich delight, although you are not there. Perhaps some day I shall not shrink in pain to see the passing of the dying year, and listen to the Christmas songs again, although you cannot hear. But Though kind time may many joys renew, there is one greatest joy I shall not know again, because my heart for loss of you was broken long ago. All right, so obviously again, as you would expect, this is a poem dedicated to her fiancé who she lost. Um, so as I've said, why is this poem effective? So it was written by a woman. That's not why it's effective though. I'm just saying, giving you a little bit of information. And the poem is clearly an anti-war poem 
dedicated to her late fiance, whose name was Roland Blayton, and she actually wrote this 19 years after he died. So obviously it just describes and it emphasises the impact of his loss, um, or sorry, his the loss of him in her life even years on. So throughout the poem, there's a clear structure. She repeats the word perhaps, which is obviously the title, and that again suggests that she doubts that she'll ever, ever be the person she was before he died and she'll never be able to appreciate the things in life like nature that she loved at that time. And everything was lovely when he was around, but now that he's gone, she can't appreciate things or see them in the same positive view that she did have before. So clearly the poem captures her grief and it just gives us a sense of loss and loneliness because she's never going to recover from it you know there's no question that she doesn't talk about wanting to find another love again she can't barely like love the world so that's what makes it so sad um there's also an element that life goes on after it so she talks about nature blooming and blossoming again christmas is passing again so you know you know the expression time's a healer time moves on and uh, you know you can't stop it However, there's not really a sense here that she's healed because of time, which is the opposite of what you would expect. So for her, clearly her life ended when he died. And so there's the sense that grief will last, or her grief is going to last forever and seasons pass. And if anybody has lost somebody who's, who, who meant something to them, you know that, that life does go on, but it's not always going to be the same as it was before, and it's just about you know, adjusting yourself to that. Okay, so your turn to do something else. So you focused on sound for the last task. Now I'd like you to think about, thinking maybe, you know, we've, we've read a poem about somebody witnessing um, war firsthand. So in Wilfred Owens, he was describing the death around him and the, the battle. And then we, dis we looked at her poem, which is all about the feelings and the aftermath of war and how it goes on for years and the damage that it's done. So when you're thinking about sites, you know, you could talk about what you would expect to see um, in, during the war, or you could talk about it, what you would expect to see after it, you know, even the, the rows and rows of graves or like an empty chair. You could also talk about emotional feelings or physical feelings. So obviously you would have the pain if you're hit by shrapnel and that sort of thing that Wilfred Owen mentions. However, there's the emotional pain that obviously Vera Britton discusses. So if you could just brainstorm a few ideas just now. Alexa, play. So just jot down what you can think of. Sorry, I oh. don't know that one. Alexa, play. Alexa, stop. Now, what you're going to do is, you've got a few things I, I jotted down, hopefully, like sounds and sights and feelings. So I'm going to put a little structure on over the weekend, and you can maybe try and have a go at writing your own war poem. Or you could even 
use some of the things that you've jotted down to come up with a letter to a loved one back home or a letter to a loved one in the war or a diary entry or there's a wide range of things you can do um, with war it's one of those topics that everybody has a sort of attachment to and an understanding of or sympathy for the people who fought and died or, or got injured so we can do a wide variety of things with it all right the last poem we're going to look at is called assault by erno miller so again close your eyes sit back relax gas faces turned eyes scanned the sky hands feverishly ripped open canisters and masks were soon covering faces a man choked as the white cloud swirling round him like fog caught him unawares then his body flopped over shells floated across as if suspended by hidden strings and then tired they sank earthwards a command like a cold shower to revive the mumbling shadows i fixed my bayonet scrambled over the open trench and struggled through the thick pasty mud it was quiet as we walked except for the sucking groaning squelching sound which came from the wet earth as it tried to creep into our stockings the wind cut me with the skill of an executioner as it came roaring down the ridge towards which we were marching over the wall then a whistle good luck mates mind that hole through the wire over the top and kill god this is fun All right, so again, Miller is describing the actual battle field and the war that's going on around them. So this poem is effective, again, for a number of reasons. So it makes clear the damage and impact of war on the soldiers, you know, in the sense of urgency and panic when the gas is coming in and the scramble to get their the masks on before they're choked. And then one poor man is obviously unfortunate to be caught in the gas he didn't make it and it describes his body flopping you know so then he talks about the, the conditions that they fought in and of the thick pasty mud and obviously then he talk, he uses onomatopoeia very cleverly to describe that and obviously then it makes you just imagine even more you know not only have you got the fear of being in battle but the conditions made it worse because you maybe couldn't move as fast as you would like through the mud got stuck and then you know got injured or killed so that's quite a vivid image of both the gas attack and the setting it's really focused on that so it makes it really clever and it just makes it clear the horrific impact of war there's a real sense of reality so it doesn't you know there's no rose tinted glasses here it describes quite, quite vivid image images what it was like to be in the middle of that and again just like you've been doing this morning he uses the senses effectively so what he sees what he hears the sense the touch of the mud you know the feel of that so it helps us picture that scene really effectively and he uses imagery all the way through and obviously the last bit there's a run of commands or, or action so mind that hole through the wire over the top and kill like that's obviously the last thing and then god this is fun now clearly the word fun is not what you would expect and he's not being truthful here obviously there's a sense that he's being sarcastic because it's certainly nothing but fun i don't know if this would change your opinion but i'm just going to tell you erna muller was a german soldier now i didn't say that at the beginning because obviously when you think about war poetry you think about the British soldiers or our allied soldiers however the Germans lost six million soldiers in World War One and World War Two approximately and there's obviously a stereotype about you know some of the soldiers and the way that the, the Nazi Germany was however you have to remember that just like in Britain these young men were sent you know they didn't have a choice they were sent to fight for their country so our sympathy should lie with any soldier because although obviously there's a positive outcome at the end there's certainly not positive actions going on in the middle 
So six million soldiers sacrificed their lives. And obviously, you know, they, they lost the war in the end. But it's just really the idea that in a war there's not really a winner because everybody has had to suffer and lose people and, and you know, there's been a loss of life. So I don't know if that would change your opinion, but I did it that way so that you can think it's just as impactful for them as it was for us. So this is the poem that we're actually going to do some work on next week. So on Monday we're going to do a lesson on personification and then after that or maybe Tuesday I think we're going to look at the first couple of verses on Monday and then on Tuesday we're doing personification and then that will help us analyze the poem so next week we're going to focus on this poem and then after that I'll be teaching you how to write a really good critical essay which is one that you have to do throughout school and it gets more and more important as you go up through school because it's one of your three exams in fourth and fifth year or sixth year if you're still in school then okay so just one final little thing so this is an ode of remembrance from Lauren Spinions for the fallen it's just one of those little pieces of writing that just tugs at your heart they shall grow not old as we that are left grow old age shall not weary them nor the years condemn at the going down of the sun and in the morning we will remember them and that just sums it up doesn't it that they sacrificed our, themselves for our freedom and we wouldn't be here without them right so assault poem on monday stanzas one and two i'm going to put the work up on the facebook page today or in the google classroom and we'll have a look at that on monday personification on tuesday carry on with the poem the rest of the week and then start our critical essays now i know today's been a little bit sad and emotional but that's the nature of war poetry i'm afraid but you just have to think that you know these lovely beautiful poems are, are memories of history and it's so important because obviously we should all be learning our lesson from them if you haven't done so you know what to do please join and like the facebook page and the youtube channel if you aren't on Facebook, there are the links for the Google Classroom where I put up all the worksheets to do at home. Because obviously the little lessons I do is just the beginning, then you can go off and try and enhance your learning at home. And if you'd like to say thanks for my efforts, that's what to do. Alright, have a fantastic day. I'm going to put up some work for you over the weekend, so feel free to get stuck in if you're a little bit bored and your thumbs are sore from the Xbox playing. Alexa, play. Have a fab weekend. Bye.